Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Svelte versus React, or to be honest, Svelte Kit versus React, because it's unlikely someone's going to use the latest version of Svelte without using Svelte Kit. But then again, that's not really a fair comparison because Svelte Kit is a bit like Next.js for React. But anyway, what I'm going to talk about in this video is why you would use Svelte over React, or in which scenarios would you use Svelte over React? And before I start this discourse, I'm going to say I have much more experience with React than I do SvelteKit. SvelteKit I've used more and more for smaller projects. So keep that in mind as you hear my point of view. The TLDR for this video, this title sums it all up. Svelte for sites, React for apps. And I haven't read this post. I'm going to share a link in the description, but I think the title summarizes what I'm going to talk about. I think Svelte Kit is really easy to get up and running. If you look at the commands to get a project running, it's just this, and you have pretty much everything you need. You don't really have to install any extra libraries or packages. If you're building a website, Svelte Kit has everything you need. The file based routing is really impressive. And I know frameworks like Next.js have this for React, but like I said, this just works out of the box in Svelte Kit. However you organize your files is how your project will be rooted. So no need for a separate router like React Router. If you put an about file in the roots folder, then you have an about root. You can go to slash about and your page will render. If you want a more dynamic page, you can change your root name accordingly by putting some square brackets here with the identifier you want and it will give you a dynamic root. And that's it, that's how simple it is. Svelte Kit also has scoped files, so no need to download start components or emotion or anything like that. You can just write your CSS or SAS in your component file and it will figure out how to name the class names automatically so they don't clash with class names in other components. Svelte Kit is also great for making sites that render on the server which is something that's not easy to do with plain React out of the box. Basically, Svelte can support server-side rendering and client-side rendering. I'm not sure about static side generation, that's something to look into. But basically, server-side rendering is when you visit a route and it will fetch the information about the page from the server instead of the client. Essentially, you can turn JavaScript off in your browser and your site will work fine. With React, you can't do that. All the code for your site is in the browser as JavaScript. And so if you turn JavaScript off, your site will not work. Now there are many other benefits to Svelte Kit, but the few I've given, in my opinion, are amazing features for you to build a website really quickly. And going back to this title, Svelte is great for sites. If you want to build a blog, if you want to build a site for a bakery or a band, or a site for your business, Svelte Kit is great for that. But in my opinion, at this moment, I wouldn't use Svelte Kit to build a web app. And a web app is different from a website. I mean, they're kind of essentially the same thing, but the way they work and what a user expects from a web app to a website is different. A web app is more like Discord or Slack or Google Mail or Google Sheets, a site that feels like an application on your phone or on your desktop. It has slick transitions, it's very fast, and it's an all-encompassing website. You don't have to create multiple tabs or reload the page for anything. The experience is encompassed in the app, and React, in my opinion, is best for that. And I'm going to give you three reasons why I'd use React for an app over SvelteKit. The first reason is that React has a much bigger community. So anything you'd want to do, any issue you have with React will be on Stack Overflow and GitHub and any feature you want to build, no matter how unique it sounds, someone has an article about it or an NPM package, most of the problems with React have been solved. And this is down to the fact that React was released much earlier than SvelteKit. The second reason why I'd use React over SvelteKit for apps is that the error messages that React gives are really clear and succinct and are easy to Google or find solutions for. If we take a look at this, 
This is quite a detailed error message that happens if you write a React hook and don't obey the rules of using React hooks. You can see this error message gives you steps as to what you might have done wrong and even gives you a link to get more information. With FeltKit, however, I had a bug that one page on my site was reloading twice and I had no idea why this was happening. There was no error in the console. There was no message or code for me to Google. And this was quite a critical issue because it would load once showing the data I expected and load again, hiding the data. I spent a long time Googling and I eventually found the solution, but it would have been much easier if there was an error message that I could search or look for. And this is one of many examples that I've had with FeltKit errors. I'd have no error message or very cryptic error messages that made it difficult to search and find answers that were specific to my problem. The third and final reason why I'd use React for apps over SvelteKit is something called reactivity. Now, because with SvelteKit, you can build server-side rendered sites or client-side rendered sites, or even a hybrid of both. In most cases, you have to explicitly declare what variable or function you want to be reactive. And when I say reactive, I mean something that will update whenever there's a change with it. Reactivity in Svelte is marked with a dollar sign and a colon. Now, at first I thought this looked really weird, but after using it over and over again, I got kind of used to it. Anyway, this doubled variable is reactive, which means any changes in the code that happen to this variable, if it's redeclared or incremented or, de or decremented, the website will update accordingly. So as you can see, the double variable is here. And if I click on this, it gets updated here. If this wasn't reactive, so I made it just a regular const variable, this wouldn't update. This might seem odd to someone coming from React because in React, all your state values are reactive. There's no way to create state values, some state data, and not make it reactive. So you don't have to explicitly declare what you want to be reactive. Now, for something like a simple variable, reactivity works fine. But in my experience using SvelteKit, I had a lot of issues with reactivity when it came to creating reactive arrays or objects. So if we look at this example here, this is uh, an array called things up here. And if this was reactive, it would look like that, which is fine. Now, if I didn't have this code in the brackets, the reactivity here wouldn't work. This is because Svelte is efficient and will only update a code when a variable has been updated. So I would have to explicitly update this array for this code down here to re-render with the update. So as you can see here, the things variable has to be reassigned to the updated version of things for this to work. As you can see, it's removing the first entries in the array. But if I just did things slice, that wouldn't work. This is an issue that caught me out a lot. And furthermore to that, if say I wanted to update a specific value in things, there are cases where that might not work because the loop here needs to be keyed. So it needs to have this bracket here with things.id, basically a unique identifier for the item in the array. And the reason it needs this again is because Svelte is so efficient and it will only update the thing that has been updated. So if I just update one value here, it will check the IDs and notice that these haven't been updated and this one has. So it will just update the right one. But again, if you didn't know that and you just expect reactivity to work like it does in React, then like me, you'd be caught out. And that's pretty much it. Those are the reasons why I'd use SvelteKit for sites and React for apps. And these issues I have with SvelteKit may be because I'm new to the framework, but I don't know. It would be good to hear your thoughts and your opinions on this topic as well. So please give me feedback in the comments below. And if you want to write more detailed bits of feedback or want to write some code in a comment, then I'd recommend doing that on my Discord channel, which I literally just finished before I started recording this video. I'll put a link in the description, but if you're on Discord and want to have a chat with me about any of the videos I've made, 
please feel free to go ahead and sign up at me if you want an immediate response. And I look forward to chatting with you. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one.